Well, please keep your Bibles open there in, in uh, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. There's only one thought that I want to take from that entire chapter, okay? Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. And before we read it, uh, we're continuing our series on the family. And um, it's a long series. I, didn't, I wasn't expecting to have so many things when I prepared this series. But of course, when it comes to families, there's a lot of relationships. There's a lot of responsibilities for fathers, for mothers, husbands and wives, children, you know, disciplining, educating your kids. I mean, there's so many things. You know, even in my series of a family, I'm not going to cover every single point. But today, you know, I've, I've focused a lot on the adults, haven't I? I've focused a lot on the fathers and the mothers and the parents. This sermon, kids, it's for you. All right, so children, you pay attention. This sermon was prepared for you in mind, okay? And fathers, mothers, or if you're, you know, you're not married, or still pay attention because there's still going to be many truths that you'll be able to apply maybe in the future or maybe even for now. I mean, there's a lot of things that, you know, uh, we may have missed as children and we need to understand these things in order to be successful adults. You see, if you don't have a good childhood, you're not raised and educated and trained properly it has lasting effects into your adulthood. And maybe you'll be able to look back at some of the mistakes you've made as an adult. We've all made mistakes, maybe some more than others, and look back and say, well, man, if I just had the training, if I just had this knowledge as a child, I wouldn't have made those mistakes. Now, it's easy to, to have self-pity, but here's what you do. You've made those mistakes. You've confessed them to the Lord. You need to make sure that the next generation that you're bringing into the world learns from the things that you've done wrong. Okay? You teach them so they don't make the same mistakes as you. But look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. The Bible says, Children, and that's what I'm preaching to tonight, right? Children, obey your parents in all things. Whoa, all things? Yeah, all things. For this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. You see, the Bible is a big book. The Bible has a lot of rules and commandments and ways of, of living for the Lord. Lots of instruction for men, lots of instruction for ladies. But for children, you get one key doctrine. You get one key teaching. You get one key commandment for you while you're under your parents' roof. And that is children, obey your parents in the Lord. Man, if you can keep that commandment, the Bible tells us, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. You want to please the Lord? You want the Lord to look down and, and smile upon you? To, to have mercy and, and shine His glory upon your life? All you need to do to please the Lord is to be obedient to your parents. Say, oh wow, wow, that's all I have to do. Yeah, but I remember being a kid. I remember that it was hard sometimes. I remember sometimes I would disobey my parents. I know sometimes I would break the rules. And I'm sure you as children have done the same many, many times. And when that happens, you know, if your parents are following what the Bible says, then they've disciplined you. They've probably taken out the rod or something and, and, and corrected you for the errors that you have made. But all of us are, are seeking at least to please the Lord in our lives, aren't we? We're all seeking at least to have that. You know, and, and children, all you need to do is obey mom and dad. It said that in all things, in all things, you say, but what about when my dad, yes, in all things, but when my mom, yes, in all things, the Bible says, right? Please go to Ephesians chapter 6 now, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, just back at the previous book, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, this isn't the only time the Bible says this for us, it says in Ephesians 6 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, there it is again, you know, children, sometimes you need to hear things twice. I know with my children, I tell them one thing and then they forget. I, I, you know, I, I think it was just this week, I said to one of my kids, can you make me a coffee? He came back with a tea. Or was it the other way around? Right? Sometimes kids need to learn things twice. You know, sometimes adults need to learn things twice. My wife reckons I have to hear things twice. Brother David, don't you have to hear things twice? Usually wives know, yeah, my husband needs to hear things twice because he didn't hear it the first time. The reason God gives us the instruction twice, kids, is because he knows you need to hear it more than once. Okay? We need to learn things many times more than once. But what does it say here? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. For this is right. If you want to live a righteous life, you want to know the difference between right and wrong, the first step for you to learn and be able to discern between good and evil, right and wrong, is for you to just obey mum and dad. You start there, you start on a good path. Okay, you start there, you start well. You do that which is right. Look at verse number two. It says, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment we've promised, that it may be well with thee 
and thou mayest live long on the earth. Wow. The Bible tells us if you want to have a good life, a happy life, a successful life, one that you can look back in your old age and say, praise God for the life he has given me. You want to have a life that is well with you. The first commandment you need to obey, children, is to obey your mother and father. Not only will it be well with you in life in the future, but it says that, and thou mayest live long on the earth. You want a long life guaranteed? You obey mum and dad. Obey mum and dad. You say, what does that have to do with obeying mum and dad? Here's the thing. Mums and dads, uh, 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 you know, have obviously uh, concerns for their children. You know, they'll give them instruction. With my little children, I don't allow them into the kitchen. I say, why? Because there's sharp objects. Why? Because there's a hot stove. Because there's hot water. If I don't issue commandments, if I don't teach them what's right, hey, don't go in there, they could very well wander in there and destroy themselves, hurt themselves, maybe even end their lives early. Okay, and so the promise of a long life, children, is that you begin obeying mums and dads. They're looking after your well-being. They want you to be protected. They don't want you to be harmed. They're going to help you live that long life. And the instructions you receive from them, you're going to be able to carry with you for the rest of your life. Now, please go to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. And uh, we're going to spend most of our time in the book of Proverbs tonight. So let's go to Proverbs 23 and verse 22. Proverbs 23, verse 22. And the book of Proverbs is the book of wisdom. You want to great, gain great knowledge, great wisdom, great nuggets of truth. The book of Proverbs is for you. There's a lot of information jam-packed into these passages, into these verses. But it says here in Proverbs 23, verse 22. Hearken unto thy father. Hearken means to listen. Pay attention, right? Hearken. It comes from the word hear. Hearken unto thy father that beget thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. You know why it says there? Because mothers, you know, as children go up, you start to think your mother's an ag. Mom, leave me alone. I already know this. She'll say, make sure you put on your, your jumper. It's, it's hot out. It's cold outside. You know, make sure you, you know, whatever, make sure you've done this, make sure, mom, I know that. Hey, don't despise your mother. She loves you. She has the well-being, but your well-being in her heart. The Bible says, don't despise thy mother when she is old. Not just your mother. It says, hearken to thy father. Listen to what they have to say. They've lived longer than you. Okay. They have more experience than you. They know this world better than you know this world. And I remember growing up as a child, as a teenager, and I'm like, uh, you got to a point where it's like, mom and dad, you're from another generation. You don't understand us. But now I'm the older generation. Now I have children. And I realize, no, it's all the same. There's nothing new under the sun. The same temptations, the same sins, the same uh, fears, the same dangers. They're out there. The same as they were in the previous generations. And this is what your, uh, you know, your parents are trying to do. They're trying to prepare you for this world. And unfortunately, children, for your sakes, you know, this world is getting worse. This world's getting worse all the time. I'm, I'm concerned for my children because, you know, yes, I'm passing down knowledge, but they're entering a world that's different to the world that I was in. At least the world that I was in had some ideas of what was right and wrong. All right. Today, they just call what's wrong right. They call what's evil good. I mean, it's all upside down today. And so, children, you need to take heed uh, to the instructions of your parents. Let's keep going. Verse number 23. We're in Proverbs 23, 23. Proverbs 23, verse 23. The Bible says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. All right? I mean, all these things, uh, I don't want to go into all those things right now. But look, how important is it to have the truth? The Bible says, buy it if you have to. Now, your parents are trying to give it to you for free. Your church pastor is trying to give you not your truth for free. But if you can't even get that for free, the Bible says, go and buy it. Go gain some knowledge. It's going to help you in your life. Verse 24, the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Children, do you want your fathers to be happy with you? Do you want your parents to rejoice and say, my child, my son, my daughter, they give me joy. Well, what do you have to do? 
It says here that you need to be righteous, the father of the righteous. You need to learn what is right and do that which is right. You need to have the word of God, the Bible, and walk according to his ways. You need to pick up this book, not just go to church, not just listen to preaching, not just listen to mom and dad. You've got to pick up this book and read it for yourself and allow the Lord God to direct you and give you the wisdom, instruction and knowledge that comes from his word. And look at verse number 25. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. So not just dads happy, mums will rejoice when they have a wise child. When they have a child that knows the difference between good and evil. When they have a child that's obedient to their parents. Children, I don't know if you realize that. How important it is for you to obey mum and dad. You obey them, you give them joy. When you disobey them, you give them joy. Sorrow, wrath, anger sometimes, right? All of the above. No, you don't want to be that person, right? You want to be the one that learns from your mistakes. You want to be the child that walks in righteous ways. Now, in saying all of this, the Bible did say, you know, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. And it also said to obey your parents in all things, right? All things. Now, the question that I get asked sometimes is, well, do I always obey my parents every single time? Well, as a rule of thumb, the Bible just said that obey your parents in all things, as a rule of thumb, okay? Is there ever a time where you should disobey your parents? There should be, sometimes, okay? The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, we ought to obey God rather than man. We ought to obey God rather than man. And this goes to everybody, not just children. You know, employees. When your employer tells you to do something wrong, when they tell you to lie, when they tell you to do something wicked, when they tell you to do something dishonest, you're going to be tempted and say, man, I need this job. You're going to be tempted to do that which is wrong. But no, you'd rather, you need to obey God rather than men. And you say to that employer, look, I'm a Christian. I can't do that. I can't lie. I have to do which, which is right. Okay? I have to obey Jesus Christ and not you. Okay, there are times when you do not need to obey the authorities in your lives. Wives, you need to obey God rather than your husbands. Now again, wives are instructed to obey their husbands. But if your husbands are telling you to do something sinful, something wrong, something wicked, you say, no, I'm going to obey God first. And then if you're in line with God, I'll always obey you, husband. But it has to be in line with God. Church members, church members. And I know this sometimes happens in third world countries where the pastor, instead of the pastor being a brother in the Lord, they see the pastor as this, oh man, this, this great and mighty man of God that can never be wrong. This man that, that requires you know, all, 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 all respect and all obedience. No, that's not even true. If your pastor is not in line with God, if your pastor is not in line with the Bible, you obey God rather than man. All right? Even with your pastors. All right. And I'm your pastor. All right. So obviously, if I'm teaching something wrong, if I'm telling you to do something wicked, don't listen to me. I'm wrong if I'm doing that. OK, so yes, even children, children, when your parents tell you to do something sinful, you know, it's wrong. It's time to obey God rather than man. And in saying all of this, it's actually a very difficult task for children to do that. It's easier for us as adults to do that, okay? Because we've grown up, we've got a mind of our own, but children, they're still growing. They're still developing. They may have great fear and say, well, I'm just, I'm just going to obey mom and dad even though I know it's wrong. Now, in saying all this, I truly believe that God is, I mean, this is obvious. If you read your Bible, God is much more merciful and forgiving to little children than he is toward adults. The best example of this in the Bible is when the Israelites had left Egypt and they were heading to the promised land, to the land of Canaan. And of course, uh, you know, Moses uh, sent the two spies out there. Um, or the two spies came back, you know, it's basically saying, yep, we can go into the land of Canaan. God's going to deliver us. God's going to give us, uh, you know, to help us defeat the enemies. But all of Israel were too afraid to go there, weren't they? They were too afraid. And how did God pun punish the nation of Israel in those days? He basically said, everybody that's 20 years and over, you will not go into the promised land. You're going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years and you will die in the wilderness. But those that were children, those that were 20 and under, they would be permitted to go into the promised land. 
Something we see very clearly in the Bible is God distinguishes those that are adults and those that are children. He's much more merciful to the children. And the reason for that is because they don't have their own authority at this point in time. They're under their parents' authority. And parents, you've got to understand this. When your children muck up, when your children are disobedient, it's on you. Okay? When your children can't obey, when they can't you know, uh, uh, be polite to adults, it looks bad on you. It doesn't look bad on your children. You know, parents all the time try to blame their kids. Oh, my child's just wayward. Oh, my child's, yeah, he's having a hard time. No, you're a bad parent. You're not instructing your children properly. You know, I've mentioned before, you know, children that go into the shops and they have tantrums and they yell at mom and dad. Hey, that's not a reflection on a bad child. That's bad. That's a reflection on bad parenting. Okay? God's going to hold the parents accountable for the children. But one thing you need to understand, children, as we saw in that example of the Old Testament, is once you hit the age of 20, you can no longer hide behind your parents. You know, God's going to hold you fully accountable for what you do. You know, and again, you see this happen in life. You know, I've seen this happen many times. People that are adults, and they're like, oh, my, my life is messed up because when I was a child, I grew up in a divorced home. And that's sad. You know, when I was a child, I was, you know, I was, uh, this happened to me, this happened to me. I had bad parents and I had bad counsel, bad guidance. That's sad. I'm sorry that that's the case. But you can't use that as an excuse for the rest of your life. Okay? You have the Word of God. You have the wisdom of God. You've got the Proverbs. You've got all of it here. The six, six books of the Bible. It's time for you to grow up. It's time for you to say, Lord, yes, I had a messed up childhood. But Lord, I'm an adult now and I can't be hide behind my past. I've got to put that behind me. Lord, help me to walk according to your ways. It doesn't matter if you had a bad childhood or a good childhood. God still expects the same, the same from all of us, okay? That we would walk according to his paths. So please, children, you've got to understand, yes, the Lord's going to be lenient on your mistakes today, but not, not forever. There's going to be a time when you have to stand on your own two feet and stand before God. So parents, you must take full responsibility of your children. Their bad behavior is a reflection upon you, a reflection upon you. Now, let me just uh, go through a few things, children, that you're going to face as children. You may even face this in this church, or you may face this with your siblings, or you may, if you go to, you know, if you're in, you're, you're in public school or something, you may face that out there, or, or some other environment where, when you're in a, with a bunch of children. One thing that I've seen consistent in every church that I've been part of is children have conflict with other children. Always happens, all right? And when things aren't managed properly, there goes mum, all emotional, my little child, right? And then she gets upset at the mother of the other child, right? And nothing gets sorted, and then starts creating conflict, and then the parents, you know, fathers get involved, and then people leave in church because, you know, there's a conflict within the congregation. And all it was about was a little toy, you know, right? they, they've left the church because things aren't getting sorted out and all of it was over some little toy, some little comment between children. And children, let me, under, let me explain this to you. You are going to have conflicts in your life. Okay? You need to use these opportunities to learn how to do that which is right. When you have conflicts with your siblings, with other children, this is an opportunity that God gives you to learn to be a peacemaker. Okay, the children of God ought to be peacemakers and you put your hand up if you're at fault and say, you know what, I messed up, I'm sorry, can we be friends again? And if, even if it wasn't your fault, just say, look, I don't know what happened, but I want to be friends, let's forget that and let's move on. Learn to be a peacemaker. You've got to learn how to deal with conflict and not always be that child that runs to mom and dad every time for every little problem. Okay? God gives you experiences as children so you can grow and learn from that and then you can take that experience and apply that to adulthood. You know, the problems that adults face is more than just a word that was said. It was, is more than just who stole my toy or who didn't play with me today. No, no, no. The problems that we face as adults are much greater than all of those. But here's the thing. The adult that cannot deal with conflict the adult that cannot be a peacemaker, the adult that's always fighting, that's always fighting with everybody, that can never make friendships, it's because they did not learn a simple principle when they were children. They didn't take the little conflicts they have, and they are little things, and deal with them and grow from them. Parents, when your children have conflicts, it's not time to wrap them in bubble wrap and protect them. It's time to teach them, hey, this is life. 
Life is not a bed of roses. God has given you this opportunity so you can learn that sometimes you're going to get hurt. Sometimes people are going to say nasty things about you, but you need to learn how to be strong. You need to learn how to draw strength from God. You need to learn how to face that person and deal with it and be a peacemaker. We need to learn, children, you need to learn from the examples, the opportunities that God gives you. I'll give you some examples of this. You know, when children play, you know, there's a, there's a term, the sore loser, right? The sore loser. You play a game, and this always happens. Whenever you have kids, it always happens. You get a, you do a birthday party, you invite children. It always happens. Some game, some child dis- didn't get the prize, and they, oh, mommy, I didn't, go, I didn't get the prize. The sore loser, right? You, you go and play a game, whatever it is, a card game, they lose, and they carry on. That's the sore loser. You know what? If you grow up to be a sore loser, you're not going to be able to make friends. No one's going to want to play with you later on when, you, when you're the sore loser. When you go and whinge and complain, listen, when you play a game, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. <laughs> it's, it's just a, that's the way the world is. All right? There's always a winner. There's always a loser. And when you lose, this is an opportunity for you to build character. You go to the winner, you shake their hand, and you say, well done, well played. Can you teach me how to be better? Can you teach me this game so I can be as good as you? Hey, we need to learn how to rejoice in the successes of other believers. Too many Christians today, right, they look at the success of other brothers and sisters and go, I wish I was them. I wish I was like that. Stop being a sore loser. Go and rejoice with that brother if they have great success. You know, learn. You know, that's what's going to help you grow love for one another. Just like the sore losers, have you guys ever come across sore winners? Oh man, they're, they're worse than the sore losers. They win, it's like, oh, I'm the greatest, <laughs> right? They kiss their muscles, I'm the best, no one can beat me. Filled up with pride. Again, if you're a sore winner, no one wants to play with you anymore. No one wants going to be your, your friend anymore. And you're going to be like, well, where's everyone? Why don't they want to play? Because you're a sore winner. Hey, if you win, you realize someone's lost, you go and shake their hand. Say, well played, thanks for playing with me. All right? Maybe I can give you some tips in the future, you know, to, to do better next time. Hey, be, uh, you know, have good character. You know, children, you need to learn this now. There, we, we live in a generation of bad character. We live in, in a generation of sore losers. We live in a generation where everyone's whining and complaining and they can't move on with their lives. God gives us these experiences as children, small experiences, so when you grow up, you can deal with the bigger challenges that come. Okay? That come. Your conflicts are small. And children, when it comes to obeying your parents, this is what you should never say to your parents. That's not fair. Have you ever heard that, parents? That's not fair. You know, uh, maybe, maybe your parents sent, I don't know, let me, I'll give you one example. Maybe your, your parents have sent one of your siblings, one of your brothers and sisters to clean one window, right? One, one of the windows. And, and to you, they said, I'll oh, go and clean three windows. Oh, that's not fair. You know, why does little Tony over there get to clean one window and I have to clean three? Forget what's fair. You know what? If life was fair, we would all die in our sins and go to hell. That would be fair. Now, God stepped in. He sent Jesus Christ to come and die for us on the cross. That wasn't fair for Jesus Christ. Listen, life is not about what's fair. Life is about being obedient to the authorities that God has put in your life with God being the higher power and making sure that everything aligns with what God says. Listen, if it's not fair, it may may very well not be fair. What are you going to do about it? Go and clean the three windows. I tell you what's going to happen. You put your head down, you clean the three windows, the other one cleans one window. You know what's going to happen in life when you grow up, if that's what you do? You have good character, you say, yes, mum, I'll do it. You go and do it, you'll be a hard worker. Then when you grow up in life, you're going to be three times more successful. You're going to, you're going to be three times more productive because you learn how to be three times more productive when you were a child. And you're going to be able to carry that for the rest of your life. You're going to be more successful. You know, as a child that worked harder, that had stricter parents, than the child that was left to their own devices. Oh, that's not fair. They got to go to the cinema and watch the horror movie. Yeah, but now they're a bum drinking alcohol with no job and no life, okay, when they're adults. You, on the other hand, married, kids, successful, soul winning, pleasing the Lord. Man, so much better because you had good teaching as a child, all right? Obey your parents. Go to Proverbs 22, verse 6, please. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. 
Proverbs 22, verse 6, the Bible says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Man, listen, parents, you have, you can, you can affect your children for the rest of their lives today. You train up a child in the way he should go, the Bible says he will not depart from it. Look, you, you teach them the word of God. You teach them the importance of church. You teach them the importance of winning souls. You teach them the importance of walking in God's ways. You teach them the importance of not being tainted by this world. You know, they may, they may yes, maybe in their lives they're going to, uh, you know, uh, make some mistakes in their lives. But at some point they're going to wake up again and go, man, I need to get back to God. I need to get back to God's way if they made mistakes in their life. And they're going to get back on that old path. But you know, the opposite is true as well. You know, if you train your children to be disrespectful, you train your children to not be obedient, you don't train your children to be hard workers, you don't train your children to the importance of, of church and, and doing godly things, then when they're old, guess what? They're not going to care for any of those things anyway. They're going to be the same way. They're going to be disrespectful. They're going to be losers. Is that what you want for your children? Now, praise God if they're saved but they're going to destroy the life. They're not going to be a benefit. They're not going to be a blessing to other people. They're not going to please the Lord God. Parents, be mindful. Children, understand this. The reason your parents are strict, they're giving you guidance today, is because they want you to be successful adults in the future. In accordance to God's word. Okay? This is what God's word says. Your parents are holding on to this promise. If I train them in the way they should go, when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, please go to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. And I've already kind of mentioned this before, but let's look at this again. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible says, The Proverbs of Solomon... A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. You say, well, yeah, I realize that if I'm wise and obedient, I'll please my parents. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's my life. I'll do whatever I want. Listen, you mess up your life. You become the foolish son. It says, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Listen, if you go off the rails you get into the world, you get into drugs and alcohol and, and all the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. You know, you get out of church and you have no interest in the things of God. Your mother will go to the grave with heaviness in her heart. Children, is that what you want for your mother? To go to the grave with heaviness and sorrow? No, that's not what we want. But if you're foolish, you will do that to your mother. You will cause that to your mother. Look at uh, Proverbs 15 now. Proverbs 15, verse 20. Proverbs 15, verse 20. Proverbs 15, verse 20. The Bible says, A a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. A foolish man despiseth his mother. Parents, the reason why we need to get rid of the foolishness in the hearts of the children, children, the reason you need to obey your parents is because you can potentially grow up and despise your own mother who gave birth to you. That's the generation we live in. They don't care about their parents. Mom and dad, give me my inheritance. Mom and dad, die early. I don't need you. Let me live my life. They despise their parents, despise their mother because they're foolish. They weren't trained, they weren't obedient to their parents. We need to understand, children, when you disobey, you're going to bring unnecessary burdens upon your own mother and father. And I'm sure right now you love mum and dad more than you love anybody probably right now. Okay? And do you want to give them burden? Do you want to give them sorrow? You're saying, if you say, no, I don't want that then you need to learn to be obedient. You need to learn to listen to the wisdom, the instruction of your parents. Please go to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28 verse 24. Proverbs 28 verse 24. Proverbs 28 24. The Bible says, Whoso robbeth his father or his mother, and saith it is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. The Bible talks here of robbing your father and your mother. Now, immediately your probably thoughts will go on like robbing them financially. Yes, I mean, that would be a totally wicked thing, right? Stealing financially 
from your parents, taking money from them, of course. But you know, robbing your parents is more than that. You know, you can rob, you can be a thief, not just of money, but of possessions and time. Possessions and time. Let me give you a quick example of this. Let's say time, let's say time. Your mom and dad says, you know, child, you know, for the next 10 minutes, go and clean your room. You know, I've got, I'm giving you 10 minutes, go and clean your room. All right. Your parents have set that time period right now for you to get there and get working. For you to get out there and obey mom and dad. But what do kids sometimes do? They get started, right? And they find the toy that they're meant to pack up and they start playing with it. Okay? And now for the next 10 minutes, they're playing with toys. The next 10 minutes, their, their, their bedroom's getting messier. All right? And then the parents come in and the, and the bedroom's not clean. You know? And it's like, you haven't done your chores. You haven't done the work. You might even be disciplined. But now you've robbed your parents of another 10 minutes. Because they're like, well, get back there. Another 10 minutes, go and clean your room. Look, you've robbed your parents of time. You've wasted their time. Okay? It's not just finances. By you being lazy, by you being disobedient, you're robbing your parents of time. You can rob your parents of possessions as well. Possessions. And, you know, a household. Look, I've got 10 kids. You guys know that, right? You know, the reason why it's so hard for us to rent up in Queensland is because all the tenants think we're going to destroy the house. They think surely with 10 kids, by the time they leave, you know, there'll be holes in the walls. There'll be pee all over the carpet. You know, there'll be nappies hanging, on the, uh, hanging off the, the fans or something. You know, that's what they're going to be thinking, right? They're like, the, the house is going to be a disaster. You know what? Children, the things you have, the clothes you wear, you know, the toys you have, the possessions you have, the house, the roof that you have, have been provided to you by your parents. Yes, they've been provided by the Lord, but the Lord has given your parents the ability to be able to provide your needs. And when you waste those needs, when you go and, and, and jump on, on, the, on the new couch, right? You go and take the pen and you draw on the walls. Hey, you're destroying the possessions that your parents have given you. Okay? You can rob your parents not just of money, but of time and of possessions. And of course, dad goes to work. He works several hours a day, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 hours, whatever it is, every day to make sure you're provided for. Take care of the things that your parents have given you. Take care. Honor your mother and your father. Obey them. They work super hard to give you a good and happy life. Okay? Children, let's go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29 verse 15. Proverbs 29 verse 15. And this is just calling back to the sermon last week on disciplining your children. But again, I'm just I'm preaching to the children, right? Children, pay attention. Proverbs 29 verse 15, the Bible says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Children, when you disobey your parents, you'd probably rather be left alone. You, I'm sure you don't want to get disciplined. I'm sure you don't want to get that rod on your backside. Right? You probably just want to be left alone. The Bible tells us here, if you're left alone, a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. You're not going to learn your lessons. All right? This is why God has instructed parents to use the rod. You know, if you're next time you, you get taken by your parents, you get the they get the dad gets the belt out or whatever it is, whatever rod device he uses, right? You need to remember something. Mom and dad are obeying the book. Mom and dad are obeying the Bible. This is why, this is why they're doing it. Because they love me. Because they want me to have wisdom. Because they want me to learn from my mistakes. Because they want me to become an adult that is successful and productive for the Lord. That's why your parents discipline you. You know? And I don't know, I don't know all the parents here. I've never gone around asking, do you use, what do you use? I don't know. But children, if your parents aren't using the rod... You're, you know what? Go to your mom and dad and say, Mom, can you, next time you discipline me, can you use the rod? Do it! That's what God wants for you, okay? And if your parents aren't doing it, maybe you need to be the one. And say, Mom, I heard in church that you need to be using the rod. Yes, you go and tell them that, okay? Because you don't want to be that child that grows up and puts their mother to shame. All right. Now, the next thing, children, I, I already mentioned this. I feel sorry for you. You're growing up in such a wicked generation. Such a wicked generation. Um, I don't even know what to say about this generation, you know. Uh, I used to be, in, I think, I've, I don't know if I mentioned these. I get sometimes confused with what I say in Queensland up here. But I used to employ a lot of people, you know, a lot of younger people, obviously, 
um, a few years ago. And, you know, people coming straight out of school. I mean, first of all, academically, you think they know, like, everyone's texting, everyone's on Facebook, and everyone's doing this and that. You think they know how to spell, right? You think these people know how to write an email. You think these people know how to do some basic mathematics, some basic calculations. And you hire them, and next thing you know, they, they can't even do the most simple things. That's one thing. But the disrespect, all right, the disrespect, the self-entitlement. I'm entitled to this job. I'm entitled to these hours. I'm entitled to this pay or more pay. No, you're not. Okay? You've got to prove yourself. You've got to show yourself as someone who is productive, someone that is valuable to the business. Otherwise, you're fired. We're going to try again and get someone else. All right? We live in a generation that is self-entitled, and the book of Proverbs talks about this generation. Go to Proverbs chapter 30, please. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11. The Bible says here in Proverbs 30, 11, There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. I, look, I, I don't know what this... This must be this generation. 2019, 2020, coming around the corner. It has to be this generation. All right, This is what I'm seeing out there in the public. A generation that curseth their parents. Okay, That does not bless their mother. Doesn't appreciate their mother. Does not, is not thankful toward their mother. You know, get away from me, mum. Leave me alone. I wish my parents were dead. Those are the things that are coming out of children today. They were coming out of my generation as well. And I thought my generation couldn't get worse. It's gotten worse. It keeps getting worse and worse. Verse number 12. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their th filthiness. They're pure in their own eyes. The self-entitlement. They never think they do anything wrong. They're always offended. It's always everyone else to blame. It's never them. Man, you try to correct one of these children these days. You try to show them the right path. And, oh man, you're, you're, why are you speaking that way? Why are you a hater? Why are you trying to offend me? Hey, grow up. Get some thick skin. You've got to learn what's right and wrong. They think they're pure in their own eyes. They think they've done nothing wrong. They think everyone else is to blame except themselves. All right? And this is a major problem. Major problem. Because when people start thinking they're pure in their own eyes, they're not going to understand their need for a savior. Okay? They're not going to understand their need for salvation. Because those that know they need to be saved recognize, actually, I'm not pure in my own eyes. I'm actually a very wicked, sinful person. And I need a savior. I need Jesus Christ. Man, we're, we're, this is the generation that's coming through. You know, a generation that's never disciplined. A generation that never learnt their lessons. You know, they're never disciplined, like I said last week. They're never going to think they're wrong. They're never going to think they need correction. Verse number 13. There is a generation. Oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. In other words, they're full of pride. Alright? Full of self-worth. You know, they think they're better than those that are, have come before. They think they know how to run the world better, right? Verse number 14. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Look, there is a generation that is destructive with their speech, okay? That instead of edifying, instead of showing love and wisdom and knowledge, they just want to tear each other down. They want to tear everybody down. Their words are like swords. And look, who, they, who, who do they go after? They go after the poor. They go after the needy. Look, they'll take whatever they can take. If they can abuse somebody, take advantage of someone, they'll do it because they feel self-entitled. They'll do whatever it is, okay, to destroy other people around them. You know, they're full of cowards. They take on the poor and the needy. Full of cowards. Look at verse number 15. The horse leech. The horse leech is just a, a type of leech. You know what a leeches are? Uh, the blood sucking little creatures, uh, like, kind of like worms. The horse leech have two daughters crying, Give, give! There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not, it is enough. You know what the Bible is saying here? That there is a generation of leeches. 
There is a generation of bloodsuckers. Okay? They're saying, give me, give me. I deserve it. Mom and dad, give, give. You know, employer, give, give. Hey, what are you going to give? What are you going to put in? No, they want to suck you dry. They want to, they want to suck your blood, as it were. And this is how they are. You know, I, I once, um, we went uh, in, in Queensland, we went to this rainforest. And I'm not sure if it, uh, there, was a, there was a leech on Sebastian's head. And I'm not sure if it got attached, but Christina tried to grab the leech and started to pull it. Like, we don't know what to do, right? I think you're meant to pull like vinegar. I mean, we're in the rainforest. We don't, we don't have anything, right? Anyway, she's pulling it. And the, let's say Sebastian's head is here. She's pulling the leech and the leech is like this long. <laughs> like, ah, you know, just pulling it. Just, just sucking on him. Like, you know, just, you know, we managed to pull it off. We checked his head. There was no blood. But somehow, even though it didn't grab on, it would just maybe held on. They're extremely hard to remove. Extremely hard to remove. We live in a generation of bloodsuckers. Very hard to teach. Very hard to discipline. Very hard to correct. Very hard to change their ways. And they're looking to take advantage of other people. Verse number 16. We're talking about those things here in verse number 15. The things which are never satisfied, right? Never satisfied. And it said here, uh, three, three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say it is not enough. So there are four things actually in total that are never satisfied. Look at this. Number one, the grave. Verse number 16. The grave. You know, the grave is never satisfied. What, what does that mean? People are dying all every day. Okay. Every day, there's never an end to death at this point in time. Of course, at the end of the millennium, as, as Christ rules and reign, then there will be an end of death. Okay, At that point, but for now, death continues every day of our lives. The graves are always filled, but they're never satisfied. They're going to be continually filled. This is why they're never satisfied. The next thing there in the list is the barren womb. The barren womb. You know, uh, wives that are unable to fall pregnant. Wives that have difficulty with you know, having children. They're never satisfied. You may remember when I, when I preached on, on uh, women, and that's actually part of, you know, God's put that in the DNA of a woman to get married and desire children. And when they aren't, aren't, able, aren't, aren't able to fulfill that, yes, they will never be satisfied. It's the barren womb. And then it says here, what else is never satisfied? The earth that is not filled with water. And that's pretty straightforward. Because if the, if the earth does not have water, there's droughts. There's no plantation, there's no crops, there's no food, and you can never be satisfied with what the earth is able to put forth. But look at the last one. And the fire that saith not, it is enough. You know, there is a fire here that is being referred to that is never quenched. I mean, there can be some bad fires in Australia, but at some point they're quenched. At some point, once they destroyed people's houses and it's caused destruction, at some point they burn out. They're satisfied. But there is a fire here that says it is, that, 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 that saith not, it is enough. And the only fire that I can possibly think of is hell. Hell fire. You know, the lake of fire that is never satisfied. That fire will burn forever and ever. And for those that have rejected Christ, they're going to be burning forever and ever. How important, brethren, is for, it is for us to get out and preach the gospel. I don't want to get sidetracked, though. But what is everlasting fire then being referred to? This generation that we're talking about, this generation, it's just as bad, just as never satisfied as hellfire. That's the comparison that we have here in the book of Proverbs. And you say, is this really about children? Is this really about generation? Look at verse number 17. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out and the young eagles shall eat it. You know, this is, you know, children putting down their fathers. Old man, what do you know? Old man, you're of another generation. You know, they despise, they mock their father. They despise the instruction of their mother. And it says here, the ravens of the valley shall, you know, pick it out. The young eagles shall eat it. It's kind of like the idea of, you know, once, once the parents lose that in their children, once the children are part of that generation, it's almost like you'll never get them back. You know, it's, it's taken away. It's like those ravens that come and take it away and eat it. You know, it's, your parents are going to desire for the children to be back the way it used to be as children. They're going to have regrets. They're going to wish they were able to raise their children better, go back in time, but it's never going to be returned that time. You know, the damage you cause with your children today, parents, can have lasting effects. You know, please use your time now that you have with them. Value it. Teach your children. Children, understand this. Understand this as well. 
Why are my parents so strict? Why do they say no when I want to do certain things? They have their reasons. They have their reasons. It's because they love you. They don't want you to destroy your life. In conclusion, guys, please go to uh, verse number... Uh, uh, sorry, Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. Let's just end on this. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. The Bible says, I'm not going to elaborate on this. We'll just read it as it is. Let's pay attention. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. The Bible says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Okay? Children, hearken to these words of the Bible. Listen to mum and dad. Okay? Listen to them and understand why it is that they love you so much. Understand why it is they spend the time to train you and to correct you and to discipline you. Let's leave it there. Let's go.